Hey everybody, welcome to another one of my 40k videos. This time I'm being about Astra Militarum tactics uh, and experiences people have had in playing them now for a few games that the Codex has been out a week. Uh, I'm going to go and talk about the firepower of the Astra Militarum this time. Most of this comes from a White Dwarf article and bat rep that was in there. So I'm just going to get to it since much of it is what I already agree with. And from the experience that I've had going over the Mass Astra Militarum Codex is that the strength of the Astra Militarum is the firepower to level any foe. But massive firepower won't usually carry the day by itself. It's all about the correct and timely application of that firepower. There's an old maxim from the Tactica Imperium that covers this point nicely. It says, identify your target, concentrate your fire upon it to the exclusion of all else. When it is destroyed, choose another target. That's the way to secure victory. And I agree with that. And that is what this army, Astra Militarium, is made to do. Just before that, we had Tyranids Codex. And a few months before that, there was another article in White Dwarf that talked about the rise of monstrous creatures in 40k. Astra Militarum shows that there is another path. Then the, then the leaf blower, high toughness, insta-kill armies. Astra Militarum is trying to show a different way of doing that. And they give you all the tools you need to succeed. While other armies in Warhammer 40,000 have the capacity to rival the Imperial Guard for firepower, the balance between powerful war machines and expendable infantry is what gives the Astra Militarum the edge when it comes to the art of long-range annihilation. Armies such as the Eldar or Tau resort to hidden run tactics and springing ambushes on you. But in most cases, except with the Tempestus Scions Air Cavalry, the Astra Militarum gained victory through a relentless, grinding advance. This is not pretty. It's vicious, it's merciless advance that does not stop until everything in your path is dead. With that in mind, I advocate ad organizing your Astra Militarum army into three cohorts, fire support, objective grabbers, and bulldozers. Got it? Fire support, objective grabbers, bulldozers. Fire support cohort uh, remains in the rear, which doesn't mean they need to remain static on your baseline. That's two different things. Just keep them away from the front line. And front lines tend to move. So I guarantee you they will have to move. Rear simply means away from the front line. Where is the main fighting going on right now? Um, and it also means don't expose them to unnecessary attacks. That's the other way of looking at it. Just keep them out of Smeg's way. <clears throat> From there, they can spin the battle, merrily pouring on flaming death in the midst of the enemy, and that's their job. Now, let's go on to the next one, the bulldozer cohort. Bulldozers, obviously, should lead the charge, advancing steadily. Typically, these are going to be things like Lehman Russ battle tanks, which can advance and fire all of their guns. That's why they can do that. Oh, also Hellhound Squadrons. Excellent for this too. To root the enemy out of cover. 
and bullgrins. That's another video. Bullgrins. It's a type of ogrin, if you can't tell. With, um, what are they called? Slab shields. If you field Lehman Rust squadrons, consider upgrading one of them to be an HQ tank. The tank commander orders, which are different from the standard orders, uh, provide a real advantage in the shooting phase of the game. Especially if you need to split your fire or reduce the impact of incoming fire. A Bane Blade, which is useful in virtually any situation, is especially designed to be a bulldozer. It is the bulldozer, unless they actually made a model of a bulldozer. Uh, with its massive array of guns is also obvious um, what you should do with it in a game. The trick to these bulldozing units is to keep firing and moving every turn. Fire and move every turn, and all of them can, so that shouldn't be difficult. But the point is, stay on focus. Who are you destroying? Are they running away from you? Are they running towards you? They're probably running away from a Bane Blade, so that means you need to keep moving and shooting at them. Okay? You can control a lot of the battlefield by doing this. If you think about it. Your objective grabbers... So basically these guys bulldozing, you understand, push them off of a target. There's an objective game, say something like that. Lots of games are objective. That's the bulldozers. They come in, push your... Either, either kill everybody on top of the objective or just push them off and now we have the third category the third cohort which is of course called the objective grabbers <clears throat> the objective grabbers can add their firepower to the chorus of destruction but their main role is to seize important objectives once the bulldozers have swept them clear in a perfect world this would be made for your Toroxes. A lot of people complain about the Toroxes, but that's because they're looking at them like bulldozers instead of like objective grabbers. These things can move full out. They should be able to get on top of the objective, going 12 inches or so a turn, and then sit there. That's their job, not to take it. Not to lay down fi uh, a fire support unless they're empty, and not to push people off, but to take the objectives. Okay, chimeras will also do a good job of this, and this is also where you drop out your Imperial Guard troops, instead of trying to use them as bulldozers. Imagine you use your Bane Blade and your Lehman Russes to push somebody off a topic, uh, off, a, off an objective, then your Torox and Chimera rush into there and drop 30 Imperial Guardsmen on that unit. Now... You may sit there and say, ah, oh, they just have flashlights and Imperial Guards. Yes, but they're not taking anything. They're just holding it. Whoever is going to take that point now has to get past your bulldozers, past your file support cohort, and then wipe out the Imperial Guards troops sitting on top of the objective. And you will find that is not an easy thing to do. It's also worth pointing out that this tactical division into cohorts is quite separate from the usual force organization chart, which, of course, the army still follows before anybody tells me that I'm telling you to ignore that. It can also be applied to all manner of Astra Militarum armies. If you want to go and watch my Sisters of Battle video, you will see that I've been saying the exact same thing with them. Your sisters of battle should just be sitting on the objective, and then you have bulldozers to push people off objectives, and you have long-range fire support to support them. And most importantly, you have fortifications to sit in. But those is another set of videos. The point is, is that this same strategy is applied to almost all of the armies of the Imperium when you think about it. Um... The key in doing this is structuring your deployment and your advance 
to make the Astra Militarum's advance in terms of sheer firepower really count. You put them in those three phases. Do this, and victory will be yours. That is my next tactic video. This was a little long one, but it was a new codex, and I need to explain a new idea. I hope you like it. More will be coming soon. Bye!